I think we're live. It's uh, December 12th, uh, 2012. I'm here with Sir Timothy Thrapp and Wits Ministries. How are you doing tonight, Sir T? Doing fine. How about you, Brother Martin? I'm doing good. I think I finally uh, kicked that cold that I had, and uh, I'm doing much better. Yeah, I did good. That's great. Glad to hear it. All right. Should I go ahead? Yeah, uh, you go ahead and take it away, and then uh, uh, then we'll talk about other stuff. Yeah, thank you for everything you're doing, brother. Really appreciate having you having you back. I'm working on all cylinders, all six <laughs> cylinders, all eight cylinders that I was supposed yeah. to. Yeah. Right. Okay, brother. Uh, okay, tonight we're going to teach a little bit on. Uh, I originally called this keys to exercising your authority in Christ, but on the way over here, the Lord said, "I want you to call that how to have miracles on demand." and keep it, how to have the anointing where you have miracles on demand, and keep it, and stay with it, and live with it. Uh, so this may be more than one uh, class here, but uh, it's the same teaching. It's about your authority in Christ, but it's how to have miracles. A lot of people, you know, we talk about needing 300 people that can have miracles on demand in their ministry and in their life, and we can change the world. And a lot of people just don't really, uh, that seems vague to them, and they don't really understand it. So. Uh, the Lord wanted me to teach more specifically on how you can have miracles in your life and have miracles on demand. I'm putting the microphone closer to my mouth so that'll probably help. Uh, the Lord wanted me to teach on that, how to have miracles in your life and miracles on demand. And so uh, the first scripture we're going to look at is Luke, well, let's, yeah, let's look at Luke 10.10, 10, the 10th chapter, and turn your Bible there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, chapter 10, and verse, yeah, verse, uh, start with verse, well, the whole path, the whole chapter is really good to read, so I encourage everyone to read that if you get time, uh, but this is Jesus sending out the 70, and he told us at the end of Matthew to keep to command uh, everybody you teach, command them all the same things uh, that he taught, that he commanded, that he taught. Uh, so this applies to everybody even today. Verse nine says, "Heal the sick who are there. Say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand." And sometimes that translated has come near to you, but what it literally says in the Greek is "is at hand," and you'll see that many places. Uh, so heal the sick, and if you if you look at all these footnotes, Mark 3, 15, Matthew 3, 2, Matthew 10, 7, if you look at all those scriptures, you find out it says even raise the dead, raise the dead, heal the sick, uh, tell them the kingdom of God is at hand. And that phrase, is at hand, is not well understood. I didn't understand it for many years, about a week ago. Uh, a little over a week ago, I was seeking the Lord about that. And uh, I said, what does that really mean, Lord? What does that really mean? Well, he said, well, that means the kingdom of God is here, is what it means. And so when you show up, you can tell him that. But he, I said, well, why didn't you just say it's here? He says, because is at hand a little different. Like uh, Brother Martin drinking a, uh, a little water there. Uh, it's, it's at hand. In other words, you can just reach out and grab it. The kingdom of God is right for you. It's just literally within arm's reach. You just reach out and grab it. Like you sit down for a dinner. Or your brother Martin has some water there. You can reach out and pick it up and drink it. He say everything you need, every good thing, is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. And if God is at hand, if his kingdom is at hand, everything you need is at hand. And that's the good news. That's the gospel. Now, the core of the gospel, the people say, is Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. That's true. That's the important core. But that's not the whole thing. If that was the whole thing, that wouldn't be good news to anybody. You wouldn't see anybody getting healed. You wouldn't see hardly anybody or hardly anybody getting saved either. Uh, the real good news is every good thing you need is at hand. And uh, and that's what he's saying. That's what he told him to go tell him. He didn't tell him to go tell him about the death, burial, and resurrection. He told him to tell him the kingdom of God is at hand. It's right here. It's reach out and take it. It's yours. And, uh, and basically... He gave him power and authority to do that, and he still gives us power and authority today. If you skip on to verse 19, he says, Behold, he says, look, look intently. I give you power and authority to trample serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall any means hurt you. That's God's word. That's Jesus. So we're supposed to keep teaching him. We're supposed to teach all the things he has commanded us. So every time you see anything that Jesus said, you know, we do our best to teach that. And he said, uh, in Mark, you can read it 
said to go out and, and lay hands on the sick and they'd recover and even raise the dead and cast out demons. And uh, if you take up serpents, I'll not harm you. And if you eat anything deadly, it shall not harm you. Uh, I've often eaten deadly things and, and didn't hurt me in the least. Uh, other times I've eaten deadly things and I have gotten hurt because I didn't have the faith for it. So, perfect bad you believe, so you receive. Uh, so, how to have miracles on demand? I'm going to say focus, number one, focus, intent, study two hours a day or more. So that's like teaching them to teaching them to observe all the things I've commanded you. Study Jesus' words and read. Focus, intent, study. Study the whole New Testament. But uh, you know you don't need to spend a lot of time in the Old Testament. The New Testament, the New Covenant, is where the power is, is where the, the the fullness of it is. People that study the Old Testament, they never have many miracles in their life. That's all they study. I've seen it over and over again. Never have many miracles in their life. Almost never. None. Uh, but those who study the New Testament study it a lot, and the power is there. Especially Jesus' words. So two hours a day or more. If you're fasting, you should spend more. Four hours a day. Intense study and focused study. Memorize lots of scriptures. That type of thing. Uh, you know, people that don't memorize, I don't know if they're even studying. I tell people, tell me they study two hours a day. I'll pick up the book they're studying and ask them a couple questions. Most of the time they can't answer even the name of the author. I don't think they even studied it. I think they're just lying. So you got to be honest with God and you got to be intense, focused, study and memorization. Memorize a few things. Memorize as you go through there. It'll come to you. Uh, that's number one. For to have the power of God, to have miracles on demand and keep it. And this, by the way, this whole, pro I'm going to give you a little regime here, six points, and this will make you even look younger. You take a picture of yourself before, you take a picture of yourself after, uh, you'll look ten years younger. And this is this can be a uh, uh, you know, seven day long thing, or a 14 day long thing, or a 21 day long thing, or a 30 day long thing, or your whole life. It can be your whole life. I'll tell you how to do it. So, that point number one is intense study, focused study, two hours a day on, on the kingdom of God, on Jesus' words, on who we are in Christ, in Him and in whom, those type of things. What we have in Him. If any man be in Christ, he is a new species. Our DNA has been changed. We're a new species. We're not just the old species. You can see it on people. They look so old. They look like animals. They look like worn down. I say old. They look, you know, look terrible. Uh, most people, uh, they don't have God. The ones that have God look more alive, more intelligent, and more alert. You can tell a huge difference. If any man be in Christ, he's a new species. He's not the old species anymore. Uh, the former things have passed away. That, that's usually translated creature. Any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. But yeah, literally, some it should the, the best translation I think is species. Any man being crazy is a new species. He's not the old species anymore. He's not of the fallen nature of man anymore. He's of the nature of God and Jesus Christ, our oldest brother, and uh, God, uh, you know, Almighty. And we're made in His image. Uh, any man being crazy is a new species. We've been totally redeemed from the fall. Totally, we can believe it. We can receive it. Uh, memorize a great deal of scripture because there's power in the spoken word. There's power in the, even if you just speak it in your mind. When I choked to death, I mentioned this a couple times in the teachings, I choked to death, I died choking and saying, best I could get out of my mind with my mouth, that by his stripes I'm healed, my lungs are clear. I died twice after that accident, the ninth day and the tenth day, about a year ago. Uh, and I choked to death saying, uh, by, my lungs are clear, my sinuses are clear, my bones are straight. My body's healed, and I died saying that, and I come back saying that. I was after two hours before Jesus, when I come back, uh, to roughly two hours, I don't know, I wasn't timing it, but uh, I came back, and every, every word I spoke all of a sudden had ten times more power. Why? Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. Now, I was standing before the Lord, and he was talking to me, and I was hearing him. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Even if I didn't remember it all, I, I, I've been remembering more and more. The good news is, so I'll talk about that one of these days on the program. Uh, but he talked to me for about two hours the second time I died. The first time I died, I think he talked to me for a while, too. I don't know if it was, I know he talked to me for a while, but I don't know how long it was. It might have been 30 minutes, it might have been two hours. I don't know. But uh, the second time, those words became much more powerful. If you die in faith, you come back, and you're stronger than you were before. God is good all the time, and if it doesn't, they have a saying: if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. And the truth is, even if, if you're a Christian, even if it does kill you, it makes you stronger. So if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. If it does kill you, it makes you stronger. Jesus got killed by the dark side. He come back a lot stronger than he did before he left. Uh, I got killed by the dark side. I come back stronger than I did before I left. 
So it, Christians are hard to kill, and uh, well, if it does kill you, it still makes you stronger. So rejoice in that. Don't don't be afraid of death. Don't be afraid of anything. God is our victory. Study a lot. Memorize a great deal of scriptures. Number that's number one. Number two is fast. Fast. So decide how many days you're going to fast, and then do it. Seven days, fourteen days, twenty-one days. Some people even fast forty days. Uh, I've only fasted forty days twice in my whole life. I don't recommend it. Uh, unless your faith is pretty strong. While you're fasting, I do recommend you drink uh, you, whatever number of days you determine ahead of time and you start drinking the first day, make fresh made carrot juice, get the healthiest carrot you can find, uh, juice, you know, 12 ounces of juice in the morning, 12 ounces of juice at night, and make sure you put in two or three cloves of garlic, whatever you can tolerate, and drink that, or you juice that with the carrots. That's step number two. This, this by the seventh day, if even the fifth day, you'll start feeling an anointing. But definitely by the seventh day, you'll feel this powerful anointing. And you'll, your hand, if you seek God with all your heart, for you got to seek God with all your heart. That's part of it. Uh, in other words, it's not just the fast. It's not just memorizing scriptures. You got to seek the God with all your heart. You'll start feeling burning in your hands here, in the palm of your hand. If you ask God for that anointing for healing, it gets really powerful. And you, you're, by the sixth day, I'm looking for somebody to lay hands on because that's the only way to get get it to cool off. Uh, it, it feels like a coal of fire in each hand. That's what it feels like. And so you got to go out and find people and lay hands on people that are sick. Go to the hospital if you can't find anybody else. And just tell them you're visiting the sick. You're praying for the sick. See if they'll let you in. Uh, sometimes they will. Sometimes they won't. But it's worth a try. Uh, you know, whatever. And anywhere you can find people. And there's sick people everywhere. So you can just start talking to people. You'll find out they're sick. Lay hands on them. Command healing. Command uh, arthritis to leave. Command diabetes to leave. You'll be amazed how many of them get healed on the spot. Uh, it's absolutely amazing when you start doing it. You, you'll find maybe, if you've fasted for seven days, you might find 20, 30, 40, 50 percent are healed on the spot. 50 percent is half. That's a huge number. If you go for 14 days, and it'll keep getting stronger as you keep doing this. Uh, if, if, the, if the nine inside gets too strong, I would recommend, in addition to the carrot juice, you actually eat a handful of the carrot pulp. Uh, when it comes out of your juicer, there's pulp there. You just take a handful and eat that. But that's all. Uh, don't eat. Don't go eating. Don't go crazy on it. Don't go eating things. Uh, you want to be on a fast, or you can call this a partial fast, or 90% fast, whatever you want to call this, juice fast. Uh, the pulp's not wrong to eat. Uh, you know, just again, only if the craving's really bugging you in your stomach. But tr mainly, stay focused on the Lord. And uh, you know, when they would repent, in the old days they would sit in sackcloth and fast and eat nothing. A lot of them would drink nothing. You want to talk about discomfort? Uh, you know, you should be willing to sacrifice our body to the Lord. We should be willing to, uh, people that uh, control their, you know, give up the eating and for a few days or whatever. I wonder if they're really surrendered to God. That's what I wonder. Jesus did say, when you fast, uh, and we can look that up. We've talked about it in previous shows, but it was in the Sermon of the Mount. I, I, and he also mentioned another place. When you fast, don't appear to be fasting on the men, but to fast to God in secret. And so he didn't, you know, people say, well, we don't need to fast, we're not commanded to fast, etc. Well, Jesus did say, well, when you fast. So that means we should fast from time to time. And I'm not saying you have to do it. This is if you want miracles on demand. If you want to be able to do miracles whenever you want and get most of them to happen. I can't get every single one to happen every time. And it's not. And, and, and only about 50, only about 50 percent or 70 percent are immediate in that range. But I can get 90 percent to happen all the time. And that's Christians should be better, at least better or better. Uh, so, I drink plenty of distilled water. And people will say, "Well, oh, I think mineralized water is better," and all this. Uh, if you think it is, then drink it. That's fine. But I, personally, I don't trust any water that's been prepared by man. They are constantly trying to poison us, as you're going to see in the video. There's always they're always up to something. These people that are advocating mineral added water, I think there's arsenic. Arsenic is a mineral, by the way. There's arsenic in that water. I've tested it. So I drink distilled water, and that's about the best you can get. But um, get, drink whatever you have faith to drink. But drink plenty of water and drink uh, two, two glasses of carrot juice, fresh made, and one in the morning, one in the evening. Three cloves of garlic in each one, at least 12 ounces. You can go for 16 ounces if you're a big guy like me. And ask God. Number three is ask God for the anointing. Seek God with all your heart. Ask him. And then act your anointing. In other words, get out and lay hands on people. Get out and talk to people. Uh, talk to people about the healing and, and act your anointing. In other words, act in harmony with your anointing. Act like you have an anointing because you do. 
Uh, third, let's see. Number five. Okay, I already said that. Lay hands on people. Because that's really part of four. Uh, and I already covered that too. Okay, number six. Tell the results. Speak about the testimony. Tell people what happened. A brother the other day told me he thought he'd try it, and that was great. And he told me a testimony. He found a dog that was limping, one of his neighbor's dogs, and he put hands on the dog and commanded healing and told the dog he's healed, and, the dog, and he told the dog to walk, and the dog's still limping. <laughs> he said, well, i got to try that again. And they called him back, and he did it again. And the second time, he, the dog took off running like, a, like, a, like he was like totally healed, all four legs. So that's good. You get out and practice on your neighbor's dog. You can't find anybody else to practice on. Uh, God is good, and you'll see lots of miracles. Make sure you tell people about them, and you can tell us on the show. We have uh, the questions and answers is also for testimony. Questions, answers, and testimonies or comments uh, in the end of every show. So tell us about it. You feel free to write us an email, and we'd love to post them on the testimonials page. Uh, anybody. Be sure and tell them, because that's part of it. That's part of making it firm and real and helping it get into this reality. Uh, number six, continue in the anointing. Uh, yeah, continue in the anointing. Okay, yeah, to continue in, I'm going to add this, to continue in this anointing, to keep it. In other words, you can only fast for so many days. I know I fasted for 63 or 64 days, something like that. Uh, but you can only, and, and he went with no water. Uh, there's a limit to how much you can fast, uh, but but when you start eating again, I have lived this way for six months, and you can live and and you can go even a year. Right? You can go indefinitely. What's called a fasted life. And what that means is you eat about one fourth of what you think you need to live, and the rest is made up by faith. You believe God that you got plenty of nourishment. You believe God that you got plenty of food. You believe God that you got plenty of vitamins, and you work harder than you ever worked. And you you make it a point to do physical work at least two hours a day along with your studying, two hours a day. And uh, and then you eat like one-fourth of what you think you really need to survive. And I would eat a half a banana a day. That's what I did. And or on that order, one or two handfuls of carrot pulp or something like that. I went for like six months like that. So um, I'm, I'm recommending it to everybody. It, it, the anointing will stay with you. In other words, otherwise, if you start eating again normally, you'll lose it in a week, couple weeks or a month or two months. It'll start to wane. Not that you lose it suddenly, but it starts to get weaker. It's not as noticeable. The healings are not as many, not as frequent, not as powerful. And you won't get as many words from the Lord uh, as you eat a full to full diet. So it's better to live a fasted life unto the Lord and spend your focus on the Lord. Those are the six points. I wrote down six points. might be five, something like that. The five points that you want to keep in mind. Uh, if you want to have, uh, want to be part of the powerful 300 that's going to change the world, we're putting together a team of 300 people that can have miracles on demand. And we had Brother Tom Tate asking me about this and a few other brothers this week. So I'm going to repeat them. Study at least two hours a day. Memorize. Great deal of scripture. That's part of study. The number two is fasting and do it right. And number three is ask God for the anointing. And number four is act your anointing. Believe you've received it. Uh, and as your hands start burning, that's a pretty good sign you've received it. Um, you got to go lay hands on people. You got to get people healed. You got to teach them. Number, uh, uh, number, let's say number five here. Uh, tell the results. Tell the testimonies. Teach, teach it. Teach it and share it. And number the last one is don't and don't stop. Live a fast life between the Lord before the Lord. And take a picture of yourself 30 days after you start. Take one when you start, before you start, and then 30 days after you start, and you'll see you look five or ten years younger. Uh, Abraham was renewed, lived tw twice or three times longer than the average lifespan. Him and as uh, he was lived, he lived to be 175. Uh, he lived at least twice the average lifespan of his day. Moses also lived about twice the average lifespan. The average lifespan was of those unbelievers that wandered around the wilderness for 40 years. They all died. All of them over 20 died within 40 years. So that means their average lifespan was about 60 or 65. 70, somewhere in that range. But Moses lived to be 120, easy, and so Joshua and Caleb. At over 100, I think it was 120, Joshua and Caleb were out whooping giants with a sword and, and you know, fighting giants, you know, so uh, over 100 years old. How many 100 year olds do you know fighting giants? Uh, you know, so this is something to think about. This is, this is God. God can do these things. You can believe it, you can receive it. And that's the rest of the story. <laughs> 
I guess we're gonna go on to the we got an extra video here. It's it's powerful, I think, because it helps expose the level of uh, corruption in the medical industry and people like uh, Foster Gamble that have developed this thing and now it's being implanted in everybody. That Thrive video, excellent video and excellent concept. Thrive, we're all for it, but the people behind it are totally corrupt. And uh, and so just watch the video and you'll see that one third have already already been implanted. It's right near the end of where we're cutting off, but he says one third of the random test test samples people have already been implanted with RFID chips without their knowledge, without their consent. They're calling it silent rape. And I think that's pretty good terminology for it. Did you have a comment, Brother Martin? Uh, no, I think uh, uh, you're inter doing an introduction here on the on the little video we're going to show. Yeah, I, didn't, I had no idea. You know, I, I've, I've heard of the implants before, and uh, uh, you've seen uh, either uh, people writing about them or uh, videos uh, about them. I had no idea that they were so prevalent uh, in society these days. Some of these people have three implants in them, one on each jaw and one in their back. I think one lady has one in, one in each jaw, one in her back, and one in her hip, or maybe two in her hips. That would be like a record, you know, five implants. They implanted uh, Brother um, uh, Boyce, Bob Boyce, two, two in his shoulder when he, they, they knocked him out with a, with a dr drink that was drugged a uh, soda pop, a soft drink that was drugged and uh, and they implanted two in his shoulder and they actually gave him cancer and uh, which these things by the way are most of them to my knowledge I, I wasn't I didn't help build these things so I'm not positive on this but most of them to my knowledge have shown up on Geiger counters so uh, that means they're radioactive that means and radioactivity has long been linked with cancer so that means they're literally giving people cancer one, they're trying to kill one-third of the population at least that's what it looks like. Oh, and later on the video, we may not show, we can't show this part because of time. It's a 25 minute video, so I recommend everybody watch the whole thing when you get time. But they got the president from the 1990s, Clinton, when he was young looking. Uh, they got him saying, uh, you know, we're sorry we implanted so many people. We shouldn't have did it. You know, we're going to try to do better. And then, and then, the, of course, the next guy comes on and he says, well, the proof is they're doing a lot worse. You know, <laughs> yeah. The proof is that we're going to try to do better. And they, instead of getting better, they, they start implanting people more, more than ever. So, right. Uh, that, uh, so that's, that's part we can't show. But we're going to show uh, 10 minutes or 12 minutes of the whole thing or 13 minutes of the whole thing. So it's a little long, but I think every minute's worth it. Uh, pay attention to how the meter reads. You'll see it lighting up close to the person. When the antenna gets close to the person, it lights up. And, and then they move it away and it gets dim again. That's showing you that it's being picked up right in the body. It's not RF somewhere else in the room. Right, right. Okay, let me get it queued up here and we'll uh, go ahead and play it. Hey, okay, thank you, Brother Martin. I'm going to kill my video, but I'm still here. I'll, kill, I'll, I'll turn off the audio too, just so you have better bandwidth. Okay, here we go. preliminary scan and what that is is we, we check for radio frequency emissions utilizing what is called the JM20 Pro radio frequency detector and if you come up positive on that we'll use a frequency counter which will give us the frequency that it is picking up or emitting up okay so phase two requires this if you come up positive on the scan you're still going to need the, the medical imaging so you're going to have to obtain an x-ray an MRI or a CT depending on what, but most of the time you probably only need an x-ray which is very affordable. It's about between sixty and eighty dollars. Okay, and we can help you guide you to where you need to go to get that done. Okay. But that that's that's the part that needs to happen on phase two. Phase three is we need to go in a controlled environment and do further testing because so that when we go to court we can say we're one hundred percent absolutely positive that this person, this human being, is emitting an RF frequency because it, we do this in a Faraday cage and the Faraday cage will block out certain frequency ranges that we're testing for that we know that are associated with RFID chips. And the purpose here is to give, give you evidence. Okay. Because if you go, any, if you want doctors, anyone in the medical field, the scientific community, or 
the law enforcement or even the those in, in politics or those in positions of power, even pastors, for example. Mm -hmm. you, you really need evidence because if you go and tell them the story, it's just a story to them, okay? And they're going to think you're nuts. That's the bottom line. I hate saying that, but that's the truth. And that's what those who are doing this to us want to have. They want us all to be labeled crazy, so you lose all rights. Okay. The following are the results of our tour when we started our radio frequency scanning across America in Sacramento, California. Here are some retest results that came up positive of victims of domestic terrorism. This is Christopher, five years old. Positive in his left shoulder area. He also came up positive in his right scapula area. His father states this was done to him in a dental office when he received a shot. Our next victim, who came up positive for domestic terrorism, is Bonnie Kellerby. Bonnie has been a victim for over a decade. She came up positive for RF transmission in her right TMJ. In addition, she came up positive near her left TMJ. She also tested positive for RF transmission on her left and right shoulder region. The following who came up positive is David Gonzalez. David came up positive in his right shoulder region. Our next victim is Richard Northern. Richard Northern has been a victim for over 20 years. Richard Northern came up positive for RF transmission near his left TMJ area. This is Barbara. Barbara flew in from out of the country to have an RF scan. Barbara has been tortured over the years in many many ways what most women call a silent rape. She came up positive in her lower lumbar, her lower back area. She can pinpoint with needlepoint accuracy where she believes an implant is and you can see by our RF testing comes up positive. Another area that Barbara complained with pinpoint accuracy was the back of her neck and sure enough we came up with positive radio frequency emission in our preliminary scan. In Europe we started the testing tour in the German capital Berlin where I met up with the Swedish lawyer Dr. Henning Witte who was going to interview the victims while I was doing the testing. The first person tested was Waldemar. He tested positive in both sides in the TMJ area. Next up was Monica. Monica tested positive in her right TMJ area. Here I'm testing Gisela. Gisela came up positive in the TMJ area on both sides. Man hört es vor allem, jetzt sieht man es auch, ja. Das ist eindeutig. She also came up positive in her lower back. I tested both Gisela's children and they both came up positive. This is the testing of Sabine. Z 
Sabine came up positive in her right TMJ area. Nee, ver veränder du mal deinen Arm überhaupt nicht, Lars. Geh mal jetzt wieder weg. Nichts verändern, Lars. Zurück. Sabine also tested positive on her back at the left shoulder area. Jetzt wieder weg. Wieder zurück. Noch näher ran. Oh, das ist doch ziemlich eindeutig. Wieder weg. The following are victims of domestic terrorism who came up positive on radio frequency scans on our tour through Chicago, Illinois. Our first victim is Angela. Angela came up positive on our left temporal area. Our next victim is Sandrea. Sandrea came up positive in her right temporal region. In addition, she came up positive on her right shoulder for emission of radio frequency. Our next victim is Mike. His torture began at approximately age 19. He came up positive in his right temporal region. Mike also came up positive in his left temporal area. We ended our European testing tour in Hamburg, in northern Germany. In Hamburg, this young man came up positive in his left TMJ area. As we continued our testing across the United States, our next stop was Kenosha, Wisconsin. In Kenosha, Wisconsin, we had several people come up positive. Our first victim is Debbie. Debbie had complained of being a victim of domestic terrorism for many years. She suffered from... Debbie came up positive for radio frequency transmission in our preliminary testing near her right flank area. Our next victim is Lisa. Lisa, just as Debbie, has been complaining of being tortured for many years. Lisa came up positive near her left temporal region, just above her ear, and she came up positive near her right temporal area. Lisa gave testimony at the Presidential Bioethics Commission. Dr. Francis Collins is the director of the National Institutes of Health. Uh, let me just say a word, though, about neuroimaging. <coughs> Certainly the problem of incidental findings, though, is an enormous, obvious overlap uh, with the genetic situation. MRI scans often give things you didn't expect, and often they're things you don't know what to do with. Uh, UBOs, uh, as they're called, unidentified bright objects. Do you want to have one of those in your brain? Well, you might, and uh, what are you going to do with that? Uh, very difficult to say. My name is Lisa Becker. I am also from Wisconsin. I have been a non-consenting test subject in military medical ex research. I'm asking you to help initiate a congressional investigation. Uh, we've all come a long way. This is what is needed. Uh, we want to have the accounts of this extreme human rights abuse that's going on in our country uh, documented and heard, all of the accounts. 
I've been a human subject for experimentation for almost two years. And I stand with, I've contacted Dr. Hall. I stand with a very large group. Excuse me, I'm very nervous, but I'm very tired of having my rights taken away. And thank you for hearing me. Dr. John Hall. My name is Dr. John Hall. I'm a medical doctor from Texas. As a physician, relative to some of what you're hearing today in the community, we are seeing an alarming rate of complaints of use of electromagnetic weapons. Microwave auditory effects, silent sound spectrum, EEG cloning, which has taken the lab out of the laboratory and into the home. Most of these, from the research that we reviewed, can be done remotely. It seems to be more weapons research than medical research. I'd like to speak about what this all means. Currently, in our preliminary testing, we're finding that between 30 and 40 percent of individuals are coming up positive, emitting a radio frequency emission. If another human being was to impede about on another person's body, it would be considered rape. And rape would never be called a misdemeanor. This type of intrusion on any human being is no different. In addition, I have a colleague who ran for California Assembly, District 9 here in Sacramento County. He was a former Marine. When we took him various pieces of evidence, he says that our military utilized this technology on prisoners caught in Afghanistan. Okay. All right. So that was, yeah, you got it all. Yeah, that, great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Brother Martin. And, uh, yeah, it's good for people to know. Uh, yeah, the, we've got a lot of questions coming about the implant. That's great. That's great. Yeah, it's good for people to know these are going on, and we'll answer all these questions as best we can. Uh, if we, yeah, we got Sister Pornima standing by to be our guest, so we probably should have did a, a different uh, you know, this topic, uh, when I showed it to Brother Lidke and Brother Rand and Brother Martin, none of them watched it. So I, I really didn't get the feedback I normally get. Uh, so we just everybody's just watching it now. So I really should have did it on, a, on its own show. But uh, anyway, we'll, we'll go to Sister Pornima and then we'll take the questions and we'll talk more about the implants on the questions because uh, it is uh, something everybody needs to know about, especially since 30% of the population's already got it, roughly the United States and Europe, uh, and probably not as much in third world countries because there's just a huge number of people in third world countries. But uh, yeah, anyway, we'll get we'll get onto that. Let's shall we go ahead and in, uh, introduce our guest there? Right, right. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, she's a sister that uh, the Lord that uh, served very high up in, pol in politics and in banking. And last week she talked about. Uh, Banking, I believe, and this week she's going to talk about politics. And, uh, and so, without further ado, we're going to introduce our guest. I'm going to try to figure out how to add her in here. Uh, or do you want you want? Let's see. Try to figure out how to add her in here. Uh, add. Do you add to? I think they had something right at the top called add to call, but it doesn't do that. It says video call, yeah, everything else but add to call. So, <coughs> oh, here, how about this one? Add, maybe that'll work. Add people. Everything except add the person you want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, okay. I, did, I think I think those uh, those implants started making me cough or something because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you don't have any. I really honestly think I have one. Hello. I had one. Uh, hello, Sister Pornima, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Well, hold on just a sec. Uh, I honestly think they implanted me uh, at a dentist's office because that's one of the ways they do it. Uh, year, years ago, before I knew about divine healing. I had a bad tooth, and uh, they said I needed pulled the whole side of my tooth, and my head had swollen up slightly and uh, and hurt. And they pulled it, and they stuffed, they shot me with three big needles. And I thought, man, there's no reason they need three big needles, especially one of them was huge, you know. And uh, and it didn't seem like a regular shot, but this is back in the 90s. I didn't know anything about implants, 
well, I knew I knew something about them, but I didn't know they were playing regular people at Dennis' office. And uh, uh, and then uh, they also put a sponge way up in the, where they pulled the tooth out, and and afterward the pain went ten times worse than uh, than before. In other words, I almost died. The whole right side of my head swelled up that time. And I had to really, that's when I really got into divine healing and started studying, and that's what saved my life, uh, even from that incident. But uh, I think they might have implanted me, but uh, it, but God disabled. So we'll find out when I get back. I'm going to get an x ray on my head, and I'm going to do some RF reading. Let us know how that comes out. Yeah, I'll let <clears throat> you know. Okay. And anyway, thank you, Sister Parma, for joining us. We already introduced you. How are you tonight? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Great. You look great. And uh, go go ahead and talk to us about politics. What you learned and what you th what was, you thought was amazing and what's going on there. Uh, last week you talked to us about banking, right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, and so you we may have some questions coming about that later, but uh, mainly uh, politics. I think is an interesting subject because uh, they are the leaders of whatever country you live in, not in the most United States. So, yeah, go right ahead. Tell us, tell us what you found out and what you thought was interesting. Well, I think politics is, you know, I don't know if it's interesting. It's it's very controversial. Um, it's it's what it is. Uh, it's, I think it is, there's corruption in, in every country, whether it's in the United States or in the third world countries. It's, um, it's just fairly endemic. There's corruption all over the place. Uh, but uh, it, it was quite an eye opener when I became a director for the Santa Barbara County Republican Party. Um, you know, it gives you a pretty good idea of what goes on, not just with the Republican Party, but uh, just in politics in general. Um, and what I found out is that the Democratic and the Republican Party are pretty, pretty much the same party. They're, I, what I call that, what I call the Marxist Party of the United States. I mean, I, there's really no difference. I agree, a hundred percent. The Marxist okay. Party, the bunch of communists. Same, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the only paradigm. You know, this is a false uh, D versus R paradigm, and they're just playing on on people. People need to seriously wake up. Um, you know, there's really there's the the reality of the situation is that the Democrats and the Republicans are pretty much playing everybody um, playing everybody up and down this way and that way and uh, people just go to the voting booth and vote and there's what happens at, at the is uh, the Diebold machines are completely rigged you know With the rigging of the machines, Obama won. So, <laughs> so it gives you a pretty good idea of what's really going on. You know, it, they they just the puppet masters just put the puppets there. Um, I agree, a hundred percent. Yeah, they uh, they could do they could hide it better. In other words, it's obviously it's all rigged, uh, but they could do a better job of hiding it. I think what's happening is, you know, for decades, this has been going on. I mean, I'd say at least for a hundred, maybe even more years. And um, uh, it just finally came out in the last two election cycles, I believe, because of the fact that Ron Paul was running. I mean, the New World Order, you know, the, the puppet masters have everything and, you know, had everything in control really well. Um, but the only wild card was Ron Paul. They were not expecting Ron Paul to make the impression he had made on so many people in the United States and globally. It's it's not just the United States. I mean, all over the planet, more and more people are waking up to liberty and to the to the Constitution message of the, uh, the Constitution of the United States. So, um, they, they, he was a wild card. They were not expecting him to show up on the scene, and even if he was. Scene, they were not expecting him to make the splash he made. Um, you know, he he speaks very boldly against the banks, against the corporations, against um, tyranny of the government, and uh, he's very bold. Which that's what we need in this country and overseas. 
uh, on the entire planet is we need bold people. Now you were involved with his campaign, campaign specifically as well, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> you were involved with his campaign specifically as well, right? Yes, I was not involved with his campaign in 2008, but I was involved with his campaign in 2012. Okay. I was uh, chosen by the the campaign to be a national delegate from uh, the from uh, the 24th congressional district in California. Okay. Um, and it, there's 172 delegates that were going to go from California to the uh, Republican National Convention in Tampa which was held in August. Uh, would go, but fortunately Romney won the district, so the Romney delegates ended up going. And if you looked at the Secretary of State um, website for California, if you looked at the 172 delegates for Ron Paul and the 172 delegates for Romney, every single person for Romney was an ex-mayor, ex-governor, Pete Wilson, who was the ex-governor of um, California, a delegate. Daryl Issa, who was a congress congressman from California, Kevin McCarthy. I mean, the list goes on and on. So every every politician was bought and paid for by Romney was on his um, delegate sheet. And then you look at Ron Paul's delegates, they're all grassroots people, people like myself. So it tells you uh, where the you know the disconnect is in politics. The Republicans and the Democrats are the same party. There's absolutely no difference. And there's no point in voting for either one of them because they're the same. It's what I call the welfare versus the warfare state. Even that's not the same anymore because the Democrats who are anti-war are now doing drone attacks in, in Syria, in um, Pakistan, in... Uh, you know, they're not letting up. The war machine is uh, uh, active. Yeah, you know, yeah I agree. Got Iraq, they said they got, they got our troops out of Iraq, but you know, there's 17 military, in, uh, military industrial contractors there, and they've built uh, uh, an embassy which is bigger than the Vatican in um, Baghdad, which is the capital of Iraq. So, uh, the, 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 nothing is left. Uh, the war machine continues. The government is still bloated. We see plus trillion dollar debt was hanging over our heads. Much bigger than that. The embassy uh, built is bigger than the Vatican. It was built in Baghdad. Built in Iraq. You know, they, the small they lie people by saying, "Oh, we're getting people out of Iraq." The part of Iraq. Well, are they really? Well, what are the other people, the uh, are doing in Iraq then? And why is it in uh, in Iraq? So it's all smoke screen. People really need to see through, reach the lines, and, and but both parties are the same. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. To have someone like John and everyone, everyone know that they're smoke screening. Wrong. I mean, he did. 
some audio issues. Uh, the last uh, couple of minutes has been real poor on uh, Skype. It's a lot of break up there, so I'm not sure where okay. that's coming from. Is your okay. audio off? Is your, is, your, is your video off? Yeah, it's, it's uh, still coming across quite, uh, quite broken up. Okay. I didn't do it I tell you what, let, let me let let me reestablish this call because uh, it seemed like it got worse and worse, and now it's in some sort of a mode that uh, is really poor, at least on my end. Let me see if I can reestablish it with both of you. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, we'll be back with you. <clears throat> oh, I'm back. Okay, that sounds a little better. Let me add uh, Portima here. I'm going to turn on my video just in case that helps make a difference. Man, I don't know what... It gets into a mode and it gets really hard to understand. Yeah, okay. Sister Bornema, are you there? Hello? Hello, how you doing? Good, so can you hear me better now? Yeah, do you have your video switched off? Yeah, it's switched on now. Uh, go ahead and switch it off and let's leave it off uh, for, uh, for right now so that uh, see if we can just get audio working. Audio okay. good, okay. Is, yeah, is how about you, Brother Martin? Is your video on or off? I see, I see you. There we go, yeah. I'm off. Uh, Okay, yeah, we'll just do audio only for the rest of the show. Uh, if you want to repeat some of the high po points, uh, feel free. But go ahead, Sister Pornima, whatever you want to say. Well, um, what I was uh, what I was trying to say is that I, I think both the parties are the same. There's really not much of a difference, and uh, you know, they the Republicans and the Democrats they keep putting the the put putting puppets in there, and uh, the presidential candidates have been decided way in advance. I mean, who's going to be president? You know, I think they decided probably 10, 12 years ago. And, uh, for example, in the Republican Party, this it, it makes a lot of sense. You see a pattern. Um, you know, if you go back to Nixon and even before, um, you know, when uh, Nixon, when Barry Goldwater ran, I think Nixon was asked to step down or step away. And then when, you know, Barry Goldwater got the nomination, he lost really badly to huh, LBJ. And then LBJ came into power. And then when Nixon, you know, I, I think um, was running, uh, somebody else was asked to step aside. And then it continued, you know. I'm, I mean, you saw it in 1976 uh, when Reagan ran against Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford became the nominee. Reagan was asked to step aside. He was promised the, the nomination in 1980, and then he became president in 1980. And the same thing with uh, 
with uh, with Bush, you know, Bush Senior, Bush Junior. I mean, it's it's um, it just continues. It, they just they it's just a mockery. You know, there are no elections. The people are selected in advance. Um, are you guys? Are, can you hear me still? Yes, you're coming coming over just fine. I think we may have lost Sir T. Let me see. If we can... I, I'm back. I, I okay. did, did lose me for a second there. So it, it's my my end. They were doing something here. So I'm, I'm going to mute my mic, but I'm still here. Okay. Okay. Very good. Yeah. The uh, uh, I thought it was uh, uh, when I, I know when I spoke with uh, Portima on the phone uh, last week, she was explaining to me. Uh, because uh, I know these Ron Paul uh, people work really hard to try to change the system because uh, he's the only one actually uh, talking about issues. He's the only one that talks about uh, the Federal Reserve and the and the uh, crooked banking system. And the Ron Paul supporters work very very hard at a grassroots level to uh, uh, to become delegates to get into the electoral college to to basically make a difference with the election and. Uh, it was interesting that Portima was right there in the midst of it uh, this past year, and uh, she saw, you know, firsthand right there that uh, uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Uh, they're going to do every trick in the book so that uh, any uh, delegates that are trying to change the way they've got it set up are not going to have any um, any power to do so. And if if they break rules, if they ignore laws, it doesn't doesn't matter and doesn't seem like there's any repercussion to it so it it demonstrates that it is just a scam and uh, it's all a big show for uh, for everyone to, to keep us uh, distracted from the real issue um, so and you know in, in a one in, in many ways um, if you want to sort of back up from all this it, when you start realizing what's going on with uh, with politics and in, in our government uh, you start looking at things even more fundamentally than that and, and, and trying to say, well, why do we even need a government? Why, why was I born into this system and I automatically assumed that I must obey these laws, that I uh, have to have these licenses, that I have to uh, uh, follow these rules because I never agreed to this. In other words, this isn't something that I uh, uh, contracted with someone for. Or, uh, and so it, it, look, it, it makes you maybe look or analyze the whole sovereignty ideas about uh, who we really are on this on this planet so uh, in in many ways all this corruption is causing uh, many of us to uh, to start examining those ideas and, uh, uh, and and wake up from what's what's been touted as uh, reality or our real our real life here so anyway I just thought I'd give you those two cents yeah, thank you, Brother Martin. I, I want to put in mind the the notes say that they couldn't hear couldn't hear my comments at all on this on the last ten minutes or so. So I'm going to repeat what I said because I think it's important. And everybody doesn't have to share this view. Sister Pornima may share this view. Brother Martin may not share. May or may not share this view. But what I'm going to say is I feel very convicted in my heart that 300 people learning the power of God, which we taught on the first part here, how to ha how to have miracles on demand, can agree. And we can set the whole government right. In other words, literally, all these corrupt people, you give them a warning, and if they, and if they you know, straighten up or else, and uh, the power of God's going to deal with them. And then you call down, you, you can strike them with blindness, you can call down fire on them. God cares about what's going on in politics. People don't think God cares. God cares more than you do. He wants the rulers of this world to be in line or under Him. This is supposed to be one nation under God. Even this nation I'm in now, but the United States also is supposed to be one nation under God. When these people are not under God, they need to get a warning from the people, the body of Christ. And if they don't straighten up, then the body of Christ should be able to call down fire on them if they need to. And God is the one that brings the fire. The body of Christ just prays and commands. It's that simple. And we can also strike them with blindness like the Apostle Paul did at least twice in his ministry. And he was struck blind himself uh, when he was out killing Christians. He was out of line. He was in the ruling body of the Jews, by the way, and he was out of line, and somebody was praying, and he got struck blind, and he had to repent and start serving God instead of opposing the way, uh, opposing Christianity. Uh, he had to line up with Christianity, and he did. And so, you know, that's...
uh, that's kind of a way, one way to deal with Christians can deal with uh, this corruption in the world. Jesus has conquered this whole world. It's up to us to keep our foot on the devil's neck, keep him from getting out of line. Anyway, Sister Bornema, you have uh, some other thoughts you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean, I think it would work better if uh, Sir T and uh, Brother Timothy Martin asked me some questions, and I think I could just sort of then sort of focus, you know, do a more narrow focus, because politics is so huge. I mean, if you, um, I think if you ask me a, a few questions. Uh, and, okay, I got a question for you. What was the worst thing you saw, and then what was the best thing you saw? So that's two questions in one, uh, when, you, when you were working politics. Well, I think the worst thing that I saw was, you know, just the amount of corruption. I mean, for example, let me give you, um, in in January 3rd of 2012, when the Iowa caucus started, um, you know, that's the beginning of the primaries. Um, it was it was pretty horrible. I mean, you know, they Ron Paul was actually winning. In Iowa, and then a, you know the the caucus is different from the primary system. In the caucus system, you actually have small people meeting up in in halls and voting, you know, on pieces of paper, and then the votes are read out loud, and they have to be read out loud so people can tally those. And they were the Ron the Ron Paul grassroots movement in in Iowa was very very strong. I mean, they we we had expected Ron Paul to win Iowa, and when usually you know, so whoever wins Iowa, you know, ends up getting the nomination or it just goes, you know, from there because then it snowballs and they win New Hampshire, then they end up winning South Carolina, then they end up winning Florida. So it just it just snowballs from there. Well, you know, they they found out that thousands of votes were taken away somewhere in trucks and dumped in dumpsters. I mean, they found these later on. I mean, handwritten votes, you know, were just sort of taken away and put away and it was it was pretty it was it was very scary um the other thing um this this continued you know in, in the louise in louisiana louisiana was another state which was a caucus state uh, the delegates ron paul delegates were locked in they were, you know in, in in the room in uh in 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 this auditorium this uh ac was turned off i mean they did all sorts of stuff when people started speaking up this one delegate his bones were broken. I mean, his his finger. They they broke his fingers, his uh, knees, and he ended up in hospital. So you know, people were intimidated by you know breaking bones and ended up in so hospitals. They, they beat him up just because he was a voter for Ron Paul. Yeah, because people were speaking up. Uh, people's mics were s switched off when they were talking in during these caucus meetings. I mean, all sorts of stuff. All sorts of shenanigans were going on. Um, yeah, well, we can vouch uh, our our show has been tampered with, and our websites have been tampered with more than once, and many, many times. Actually, it seems like a regular occurrence. So, so I can I can believe totally what you're saying. I have no doubt whatsoever that you're speaking yeah, the whole truth. Yeah, I mean, you know, and like I said, you, you know, the 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 entire political process, this entire thing thing is a mockery. The entire political process is a mockery, especially at the federal level. You know, the presidential elections. They're rigged. They already decide years in advance who who is going to be the president. I mean, the the powers that be, the New World Order, the Illuminati, whatever you want to call them, the banksters, the Bilderberg, you know, the reptilians, who you know, whatever you want to call them, they decide who. They're the puppet masters. They decide who the puppets are going to be. The puppets are the proxies. No, the people who make all the rules are hiding in the shadows. And this is not a conspiracy. This is the this is a fact. I mean, Absolutely. you know, this year, the Bilderberg meeting happened in Chantilly, Virginia, um, and it happened during the primary season. I think it was in June or July. And Ro Romney was called to the Bilderberg meeting. Um, Rand Paul, who was Ron Paul's son, who's a senator, junior senator from Kentucky, he was there. I don't know what he was doing there, but he was there. And I, uh, you know, Rand has been bought out. Rand is nothing like his father. I mean, he just compromises. I think he just wants to be the, the president of the United States. And <laughs> unbeknownst to Rand, Rand is never going to be the president of the United States. I mean, yeah. Rand can do whatever he wants. He's certainly not going to get my support, uh, yeah. like my father okay. will. Okay, uh, yeah. Portima, Portima, let's see, let's hear something good that, that that you saw. What was what came? What was good that came out of it? 
What was the well, bad thing you saw the, there? I think the good thing is people are opening their eyes to what's really going on. You know, um, I think people are understanding that this whole system is crumbling. The dollar is collapsing. We have a debt, which is $16 trillion. So people, people do understand that things are not what they seem, you know, what the media portrays it to be all cozy and cute and everything is wonderful. Inflation is not at 2%. It's more like 22%. Unemployment is not 10%. It's more like 21%. So um, people are waking up, but I, I wish people would wake up a little faster than they are right now. <laughs> I'm with you 100%. And, and I, yeah, I think you're right. I think unemployment is about 80 or 90% in the United States. <laughs> And, uh, and probably, uh, probably, uh, what was the other one? Unemployment and uh, from inflation. Yeah, inflation is probably, yeah, 25, 50, 40 percent. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, people, I think people need to, uh, people need to wake up as soon as they can. They need to switch off their media uh, drones, you know, like Glenn Beck and CBS and NBC and CNN and even Fox. Uh, yeah. And actually, just go to Alex Jones, or you know, and just go on the internet and do your own research. There's all this information, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just tons yeah. and tons of information on what's really going on. Go, go listen to Tom Woods, listen to Peter Schiff, and you get a pretty clear idea of what's really going on. These people talk about what's going on in the economy, not just the United States economy, but the global picture. Yeah. So, um, I, I think that people are waking up, but. I think what is really difficult for me to understand, really, is that this D versus R paradigm, people are still very blinded by the Democrat and the Republican. When they see a Democrat and their families are Democratic, they just vote Democrat. If their families are Republican, they vote Republican. And I think people need to get out of that, that psyche. You know, They just need to get completely out of this whole paradigm, the brainwashing and indoctrination that the D versus R, you know, presents. People just need to clearly see what's going on. And, and you know how you can do that? Just read the Constitution of the United States. Read the Declaration of Independence. Read the Constitution. Particularly read Article 1, Section 8, which gives you the powers of Congress. The, the, you know, it says there the powers of Congress are, and it enumerates the different powers of Congress. And if anything that is happening in government right now is not mentioned under Article 1, Section 8, then that is not the power of Congress in the federal government. So when we go to war and we don't declare wars, we have not declared a war, by the way, since World War II. Korea was never declared. Vietnam was never declared. The first Gulf War wasn't declared. Afghanistan was not declared nothing. These are all police actions. They have never been declared. What do I mean by declaration? Two-thirds of Congress, the House and the Senate, have to ratify a declaration of war. You know, they have to declare war. If, if Congress does not declare war, that war is unconstitutional and it is illegal. And the only reason the, the president and all these puppets don't want to declare war is because they're not going to get a declaration of war. How, when's the last time two thirds of Congress has ever agreed on anything? You know. Plus, remember, women vote in this country. You think women are going to vote to send their kids to war through a declaration of war? That's never going to happen. They're going to tell their congressman or congresswoman, "I'm not going to send my kid to war." So they get these phony declarations from the Arab League or the United Nations, which is not part of our country. It's not part of the Constitution. And so um, the declaration of war is very important. The other thing that's very important to remember is there has to be an imminent attack on the United States. What do I mean by an imminent, imminent attack? A country has to not just declare war, but they have, to, they have to attack us, our soil. When's the last time that happened? People will say, oh, it's Pearl Harbor. You know what? Pearl Harbor was phonied up. I, and I, have, I can give you immutable proof why Pearl Harbor was phonied up. Yep. The Lusitania I've... in World War I was phonied up. The Germans told the American public in the newspapers, the New York Times published uh, the German sentiment. In fact, the Germans even said, listen, you're coming, the Lusitania is a luxury liner which is going to be in German waters. If you people are going to board the Lusitania, there's a very high chance we're going to sink the Lusitania. But you know what? 
<laughs> nobody nobody heeded anything it was never even told there was a massive media blackout people went on the lusitania 1200 people died before the lusitania attack 85 percent of americans did not want to enter world war one after the lusitania attack all of america wanted to enter world war one this is what happens. they manipulate people into going to war it's it's yeah, war. it's, it's like the not Go ahead. Well, we know the 9/11 was the same thing. It was all a big put on by the our go by the United States government uh, to uh, pretend like that we were being attacked by terrorists. Well, and then right after right after that, within a week after that, they were out in Amish country arresting Amish people for selling healthy and make eggs and milk to their neighbors. So you you can see that there's something really uh, messed up by the uh, the terrorists that did that attack, and the terrorists that did that attack was the United States government. Uh, and I don't mind telling them too. <laughs> that's what they're. That's what they're doing. Anyway, you want, you want proof that 9/11? Uh, this is not again. This is not conspiracy. Seriously, you look at Building Seven. It came down like a demolition. I mean, it came down perfectly. Do you know what no, was no. in Seven? Building Seven was NSA, FBI, CIA. Uh, all sorts of records were in there. Why do you think they destroyed that building? Because all the proof, w you know, p would come out. So they had to destroy the proof. All yeah. eleven was there in was that building. There was also a huge gold hide that went on right underneath the buildings, uh, and and they found evidence of that too. And you know, it's a huge gold, probably the gold biggest gold heist in, in history. Yeah. I think it happened just before the destruction of the building. So that was one of the reasons they wanted to destroy the building or whatever. Well, I also want to something else you know the Patriot Act Patriot Act suddenly came out in 2001 after the 9-11 attacks well here's a news flash in F the Patriot Act was actually formulated years before 9-11 even happened I mean I, there's you just look it up on the internet it's plain as daylight the Patriot yeah. Act was formulated by Congress and a lot of other people in smokes in smoke rooms smoke filled rooms Years before 9/11 happened, they were just so 9/11 was concocted for the Patriot Act to be put into place to take away okay. the completely. They, the Patriot Act decimated the Fourth Amendment. Yeah, then, to take away the freedoms completely, so they could literally start arresting people that are selling eggs and milk to their neighbors. I mean, it's just an example. In other words, there's many things they started harassing us about. Uh, and I'm um, just so people know, I'm homage. I'm also uh, many other Christian uh, denominations. I'm all denominations. One of my favorites, Amish, and I hate to see good people that are working hard, honest living, selling healthy milk and eggs to their neighbors, getting arrested just for doing that. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing. Yeah, you're right. They concocted it just to take away people's freedoms. Well, and not only that, the the scary it's and it's getting ex accelerated in the last the last four years. It's just gotten worse. I mean, the 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 draconian regulations and laws to take away our liberties have been really crazy i mean for example the national defense authorization act well the national De defense authorization act gets renewed every year nothing big about it nothing to write home about however there's something called the subsection 1021 in the national defense authorization act which is absolutely horrible it says intention is in an american soil maybe Hey, Pornima, you're going to have to repeat that because uh, I think uh, Sir T had some background noise and it kind of wa washed over you. Okay, where do you, which which part? Yeah, do you just the to... part about that uh, last part with the uh, NDAA uh, uh, that's okay. terrible. Well, the, the National Defense Authorization Act, subsection 1021. The subsection is really, really bad. That, you know, that really, the subsection does it take completely destroys our bill of rights i mean we have no bill of rights as of december 31st 2011 and what is subsection 1021 what it is is um indefinite detention of american citizens on american soil now american soil is apparently quote unquote seen as the battleground believe it or not so if you're suspected of terrorism you can just be taken away by the military, okay? By the military, military police, anybody can take you away, lock you up, no habeas corpus, no jury trial, so peop so you, nobody would know you're even locked up. And it, essentially, you can be put away somewhere in Guantanamo Bay or wherever, and people wouldn't even know you exist. So it is absolutely heinous. I mean, subsection 1021 completely 
destroys all our Bill of Rights. It, it's really a bad, terrible law. And what is ironic, and this was done deliberately, I'm pretty sure, uh, December 31st, I believe, of 1798 is when we got our Bill of Rights, or somewhere close to that. And December 31st, 2011, exactly 224 years later, to the day, they took away our Bill of Rights. So do you think this is all just coincidental? I believe that they planned all this out. I mean, and now the stuff that is coming down the pipeline, you know, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. You got FEMA camps uh, set up all over the the United States. I mean, people don't, build, you know, people think this is this is not true, but this is true. Um, I agree with you. Let's move on to some questions. Yes, you're absolutely right, and and uh, I know you can keep us uh, spellbound for hours. <laughs> I have no <laughs> doubt. At least for me, but uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and better move on some questions, or we'll wind up being here for too long. Uh, Brother Dave in Alaska, what do you think of the U.S. Constitution and limited government, Sister Portima? We don't have limited government. We have unlimited government. <laughs> We're supposed to have That's right. government. Um, to quickly answer that question in one or two sentences. The federal government is, has 10% of the power. The states have 90% of the power. Right now, the states have no power, and the federal government has all the power. So I think that should answer his question. Yeah, yeah, yeah and the people have zero, too. And the people are the ones supposed to be in charge. Of the, all these leaders, all these politicians and workers and so on are supposed to be public servants, servants of the people. Anyway, what do you think of central bank owners deciding who runs for president? Uh, the central bank, uh, what do I think of it? Yeah, what do you think of it? Well, it shouldn't be happening, but it is happening. I yeah, I agree. Okay, brother, uh, uh, let me let me back up a little bit. And thank you, brother uh, Dave, for those questions. Let's uh, back up a little bit. Uh, okay, we're getting some questions on implants. I think I'll cover those because we don't want to mess them. Um, these implants are described as torture, Brother Mitke, uh, Brother Randy, excuse me, Brother Randy Urban says this. What sensation are people experiencing that have these implants? Uh, mostly pain. I've, I've seen probably three people implanted now, and like I say, I suspect I was implanted uh, by uh, dentists, and uh, at least one dentist. And the it's a terrible pain and swelling and uh, eventually cancer because uh, you know these RF has proven to cause cancer in close proximity inside the human flesh I'll put it that way it uh, so that's that's the most common uh, and of course cancer is very painful itself brother uh, Tom Ra Tom Rambo how and where did they get these implants dentists doctors and uh, uh, those are the two biggest ones, medical doctors and dentists, uh, inject them into people. There's other, you know, CIA will give them to you, anybody will give, what, give you one if you're not watching out, if you're not careful. What powers these implants to transmit a frequency? Brother Andy asked that. Uh, most likely radioactivity. So that you can thank the guy, uh, Foster Gamble, who admits right on Thrive that him and his organization is, are the ones that invented this. And Thrive, like I said, is a great concept. It's wonderful. We're all for people thriving and humanity thriving. But those people are not. They're pretending to be. And they suck up all the money that people would donate to the real solutions. And they keep it and buy fancy yachts and fancy houses and build more uh, microchips and implant them in more people while they're pretending that they want mankind to thrive. Uh, Brother Randy, okay, so yeah, it could be, a, it could be radiation, basically. Uh, in other words, nuclear material that powers these things. It could be a number of things. Uh, Sebastian in Munich says, what is the frequency of which the RFID chips are sending? That's a good question. They did mention it on the video. You'll have to watch the whole video real close, but I think they mentioned above 10 megahertz and even up in the gigahertz. Uh, so it's, it's high frequency stuff, and you can look it up online as well. Next question, let's see. I'm skipping, well, this is not a question, so I'm skipping some things that are not for the show. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, uh, got, I've got one that came in through an email uh, before the show tonight. Sure, sure go uh, right ahead. Yeah, it's for Sister Pornima. Uh, it's a Dan in Wisconsin. Uh, actually, he has two questions. Uh, first of all, do you, 
Do you know anything uh, regarding the uh, resetting of the fin world financial system? Uh, that's one question. And the other question, uh, I guess he's got a question about the Iraqi dinar. Uh, as it's, uh, is it going to revalue, or is that a possibility? And uh, it's supposed to be is a uh, is going to be a uh, asset backed currency. And so, do you ha have any input on that, uh, sister? Well, um, as far as the, the the world financial markets, um, you know, I I honestly don't really know what they're planning to do. I just know one thing that uh, the ECB, which is the European Central Bank, and the Federal Reserve are in co are are colluding, and they just keep printing money. So I don't think they're resetting anything. All they're doing is printing money, and uh, there's fiat money just floating around all over the place. And uh, there's about 105, uh, 195 trillion dollars in unfunded liabilities all over the planet right now, I believe, and rising. I mean, wow. that's a lot of money. So right. I don't know what they're going to do to reset the entire financial, the entire global market system because it's just not. It's it has to collapse, and I think it's it's going to at some point. It's yeah, going to be a real effect. It's going to be a what effect? It's going to be a what effect? Domino effect. I mean, it's just if it collapses in the United States, it'll collapse in Europe, and then it'll just collapse everywhere else too. And then yeah. we're just going to have to go to gold, silver, and other commodities. That's just how I see this happening. You know, yeah. I just yeah. see it playing out. And as far as the Iraqi dinar, I think it's I think it's the Iranian dinar. The Iranians uh, are um, going away from the petrodollar and going towards gold. They're trading in gold with the BRICS countries because there's India and China are the two big countries in the BRICS uh, consortium that need oil and they get their oil, like 40% of their oil. I can speak for India because India gets 40% of its oil from Iran. And um, India traded with uh, Iran in gold. They completely bypassed the dollar. Uh, I call it the petrodollar because that's exactly what it is. It's the universe, you know, it's the reserve currency of the planet. And so they're bypassing it to, to deal in commodities like gold and silver and maybe other other precious metals, maybe like copper. So uh, there is a good possibility that the Iranians might actually uphold their dinar and it might be backed by something like gold. So if they do that, you know, they might just be one of the countries on this planet who are not a uh, fiat currency. I think not only the Iranians, but also the uh, China itself will be backed by gold, is what I suspect. Now, I, I don't know that uh, the word from the Lord or anything, but I, China has been telling its successful entrepreneurs, has a whole bunch of successful entrepreneurs now, and uh, it's been telling them to buy gold and uh, and hold it as uh, rather than put money in the bank. So that's that, that tells you something right there. I'd say the the, Ch the leadership of China is planning something probably to go to back go back currency. Which in effect would double their currency and make their currency the strongest currency on the planet because right now no currency it would it would double the currency value in my opinion and make it the strongest currency on the planet so that's that's my guess on all this uh, yeah it's my two cents anyway uh, yeah that's a great question uh, and earlier you said something about so many trillion floating around and it, you called it something fiat uh, I don't know what you called it can you repeat that it faded yeah. out on the hundred and hundred and ninety five trillion dollars in unfunded liabilities this is for the entire planet and what okay. I mean by unfunded liabilities is um, you know things like social security other countries have them too Europe has its own form of social security Medicare Medicaid etc pensions you know all the pension plans people have their retirements those are the unfunded liabilities unfunded liabilities that that people are vested in for the future things that have not been given out yet those are the unfunded liabilities there's absolutely no money we have 195 trillion dollars worth of unfunded liabilities floating around the world markets right now and there is no m nothing to back this up we have nothing to back it up with we we are in a lot of doo-doo <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you for telling us that <laughs> anyway uh, okay let's go on to a few more questions um, 
regarding the politics of the USA, what is the solution? This is from Brother Randy. Uh, I'll let I, I did comment on that twice already, but it may or may not have come through. But go ahead, uh, Sister Pornima. Do you have a solution or an idea or a thought there? Uh, yeah, I think a you know uh, people need to be conversant with their rights. They know they need. That's why I said people need to read the Declaration of Independence very carefully. Read the. Uh, uh, read the Constitution very carefully, understand it, and understand the intent of the founding fathers of this country. And most importantly, I think, is to start practicing liberty and to start practicing self-sufficiency in your own lives. I mean, you, you really can't do much in politics. I mean, politics is just very corrupt. I mean, there's not much you can do at the federal level for sure. And even at the state and local levels, you know, even there, there's corruption. So you can try to do as much as you can at the local level, maybe at the state level, at the federal level. I, it's very, you know, it's not, I don't know. I mean, that's a big question mark. But practice, you know, just, just be conversant, be aware, uh, spiritually conscious of what's going on. Um, keep your guns handy. You're going to need those. Keep your, <laughs> keep, keep you your what? You said keep your guns handy. The Second Amendment is going to come in very, very handy because they're trying to take away all the small guns and the rifles and everything. I mean, the small arms treaty of the United Nations that Hillary Clinton is trying to sign. They're trying to put a ban on small guns and small arms. I don't know if you guys know that. I, I think it all it went through already. It's part of Agenda 21, the United Nations Agenda 21. So I would keep ammo ready. I would keep guns ready. Um just be aware of what's going on and I think just at the grassroots level practice being very self-aware and spread the word of um, God and spread the word of liberty you know amen amen well I did mention and I'm gonna I'm gonna briefly repeat this uh, brother Lidke asked me a question uh, before the show uh, he said that uh, you know we're talking about politics and how the power of God can play a major role in s straightening things out in in governments. And uh, he, he's, we were talking about how Elijah called down fire. Fifty-one men came to arrest him with swords and spears and bows and arrows and who knows what all they had weapons-wise. And he's just one man sitting on top of the mountain. And uh, they said, that, "Man of God, you're under arrest." You know, the king's order. And he said, "If I'm a man of God, fire will fall down and burn all you guys up, and burn them all up." He said another 50, and he burned them all up too. Uh, the third 50, the guy was a little smarter, and he left his army there, there the way, way a ways away, and he crawled up on his belly, and he said, Oh, Master, I'll do anything you tell me. Just tell me what you want me to do. <laughs> you want me to rest the king? I'll go rest the king. Whatever you tell me. Uh, so uh, Brother Litke said, Well, why didn't Elijah call down fire on uh, Ahab and his wife? Because that was the king and his wife. They were the ones causing all the problems. And the reason is because there, in governments, there's a lot of unclean spirits. One man can put a thousand to flight, two of us can put ten thousand. Elijah needed more than just him, uh, and he might have had one or two. But there's there's numbers involved here. One of us can put a thousand, two of us can put ten thousand. There's millions of unclean spirits in most governments, if not billions. And so it's going to take about 300 people to set this planet right that have the power of God active in their life every day and that's why we're teaching the show we need to when we are getting more people joining and getting mature or starting to mature there's a lot of baby christians that don't have a clue how to operate in the power of god or how to ever get there and that's why we teach on that so much it is the most important technology and it is the solution to every problem on this planet and eventually the power of god is going to win because the bible says so so the question is, how bad does it have to get before enough people straighten up and start working together? And we have influenced governments in a huge way already. So that answers Brother Randy's question. Let's go on to Brother uh, Linebaugh's question. And he makes a comment here. I'm not sure what he meant. Right, Scott Rich. I, know I think he means Scott Rich is an excellent uh, person to listen to, maybe. Uh, and then he says, Sir T, do you think the answer is in Second Chronicles 7, verse 14? And I think it's I think he's absolutely right. It says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. So it's, it talks about about five different things. Humble ourselves, pray, seek God's face, seek him with all our heart. That's number three. Turn from their wicked ways is number four. So there's four things that it mentions there in this in this uh 
Uh, now, the thing that uh, people don't realize is when you turn from your wicked ways, when you humble yourself, you're going to start doing what God tells you to do. And in the New Testament, this is the Old Testament, they didn't know, they didn't have the commands about taking authority and standing on the devil's neck, keeping, feet, keeping your feet uh, on the devil's neck, keeping opposing the devil. Uh, the Bible, the New Testament tells us to oppose the devil and he'll flee from us. And, uh, and people don't, they didn't have that command in the Old Testament. And so, yeah, if we keep God's commands and turn from our wicked ways, humble ourselves and pray, yeah, and exercise authority, the prayer of faith can do great things. And we can, God will heal the land. He's, he's with us. In other words, it doesn't happen apart from us. Uh, in other words, we're part of the equation. And people have to take a certain amount of responsibility. Somebody can set a plate of food from you, in front of you, but that doesn't mean you're going to eat it. Uh, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, is the old saying. Uh, God has given us every good thing. The kingdom of God is at hand, but people have to pick it up and eat it. People have to pick it up and make it happen. It's it's up to us, but we've been given great power and great authority. The next question from Scott Rich says, uh, Sister Pornima, have you learned of any secret agenda or anything like that that shocked you? Um, well, yeah, I mean, um, I, I guess I finally learned that they, they've been, they've been appointing presidents, not electing them, you know, they've been appointed years in advance. Um, and, um, uh, you know, I, I finally just put the two, put two and two together. I mean, I started seeing, like I said, I saw the pattern on the Republican side. It's on the Democratic side too. Um, you know, they decide who the nominees are going to be. They decide who the presidents are going to be. And uh, if you see the pattern of who was asked to drop out four years before and then the next four years later, you know, like Bob Dole, you know, became the nominee in 96. He was, In 92, I think he was asked to bow down or bow out or something. And it, it's, it's very interesting. It's, it's quite fascinating, really. And uh, the other thing that's very weird and very shocking, by the way, is that each of these uh, people who do become presidents, at least on the Republican side, you know, there's always some kind of scandal going on. You know, either they've go there's some affair they've had, or so somebody's got something on them, and that's how that's why they become presidents. You know, they become uh, puppets, and people don't want anybody. You know, they don't want any of the uh, information leaking out. Uh, like Ronald Reagan, you know, he, I'm sure he had a mistress or two i mean he was in hollywood and you know he's considered a great uh paragon of conservatism um but you know he he was um i think he was threatened into taking george uh, h herbert walker bush as his vice president and herbert walker bush was a very nefarious character he was the director of the cia so I mean, I can go on and on about, you know, the shocking things of politics. You know, after a while, you, when you're in politics, nothing shocks you. I mean, it's all, it's all down and dirty. <laughs> so, All right. Oh, you're right. Absolutely. Let's go on another question here. We've got a bunch of questions. Uh, Brother Jim H. Uh, from, doesn't say the state, he says, if the feds have 100% of the power, then can the states actually secede from the union? The answer to that is yes, a resounding yes. It's called the Tenth Amendment. It's also called nullification. Um, there's also something called um, uh, the Virginia and Kentucky Resolutions of 1798. Um, and you, what it, what it simply says, the Virginia and Kentucky re Resolutions, which were formulated by Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, they were written in secret by these two people. And what it says is that any law that is unconstitutional that comes down the pipeline from the federal government to the states, the states have not just the right, but the obligation to nullify the law. So yes, absolutely. In fact, it is very constitutional and very patriotic to secede from the federal government. Okay, okay thank you very much. Uh, yeah, next question. Um, Let's see, I had it here, and then it got away. Okay, there it is. Uh, Brother Randy, well, we got Brother Truth, uh, Brother Tom Linebaugh says, was Ron Paul asked to step down? He was winning. That's, he makes a comment, he was winning, and then he says, was he asked to step down? Question well, mark. Well, I, I don't think, like I said before, I don't think he was asked to step down. I think he was, his, his uh, campaign was derailed by in, 
his campaign manager, Romney's campaign, and a bunch of other people. Oh, by the way, I just found out, I have to slip this in because this is really important. I just found out two days ago from one of the delegates in, in Nevada um, who went to the convention. Ron Paul was, dele- was nominated on the floor. Let me repeat this. Ron Paul was nominated by more than five states. You need a plurality of five states to delegate, to nominate somebody on the floor. He had 10 or 15 states. I think it was 15 states nominated him officially on the floor. What happened is the nomination papers were taken by the secretary to the back and were given to Romney's lawyer. Romney's lawyer apparently comes out stomping, tells Rand Paul, who is Ron Paul's son, he says, 15 states, he waves these papers, and there's eyewitnesses to this. He tells Rand, he says, 15 states have nominated your your dad. I will make sure that never happens. It will never happen. I will make sure it never happens. <laughs> so he was nominated. He was just, that nomination was just annulled. I mean, it was, like I said, a lot of shenanigans happened. If So Ron Paul was officially nominated on the floor of the Republican National Convention in Florida, in Tampa. But it was blackballed, not just by the media, but the Rens Priebus, the entire RNC, and a bunch of other people. They falsely nominated Romney. So he was, it was, it was fraudulently done. So Ron Paul was actually nominated, but... You know, it like I said, it, they're they're actually now trying to take it to the Supreme Court. To um, the 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 delegates are trying to bring this up, um, find a lawyer and take it to the Supreme Court and see if they can nullify the nomination. And I don't think it's going to work, but you know, you never know. Okay, well, thank you for that comment. And uh, yeah, I think it's awesome news that he was nominated by fifteen states. Did you say fifteen states? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So so people. Uh, you know there is there is some hope even there, and again, it just needs enough people to take spiritual authority. We have influenced the whole government. I can go into it. we've talked about it on previous shows uh, the family of God with the miracle power of God. We've influenced whole governments already and to do the right thing, and we can influence governments to do the right thing. And when Jesus gave me those visions a year and a half ago, he told me that quite clearly. The how severe the judgment is, or how minimal the judgment is depends on what the people of God do. Or do we humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and do good and take authority and command the devil, or do we just let the devil run loose? You know, it's it, people of God need to start getting organized and start getting charged up with his power and start doing miracles on demand. Brother Randy goes, has a question or comment, is the comment. He says, uh, FEMA is waiting and prodding folks to act out so that they can go cherry picking. He means they can arrest them and start chopping their heads off. Uh, I think is what he means by go cherry picking. And then, so in other words, FEMA wants a lot of they want they want trouble. They want an excuse to start arresting people and putting them executing them or whatever. Uh, he says uh, goes on to say the solution is more spiritual. So thank you, brother Randy, for that comment. And then he says uh, if you can find it view loose change and he puts that in caps so it must be a video very good underground video about 9-11 yeah i think we've all seen enough 9-11 videos that we don't really need to see anymore uh actually i knew it was just the fact the way those buildings came down they they exploded from the bottom up and the airplanes didn't hit the bottom you know what i mean so the fact the way those buildings came down and plus, there's no way an airplane crashing into a building. Those buildings, I'm an engineer. Those buildings are built with tons and tons of solid concrete and steel in the basement. So there's no way those things are going to come down because an airplane hits the top. Airplanes are flimsy little paper things. You know, they're just nothing. You can punch your hand right through any airplane if you wanted to. Uh, there's no way those things are going to cause a building to come down. That's just so, the whole idea is there's such a ridiculous thing. I'm surprised anybody bought it, but I guess most people are just not engineers. Uh, those are steel buildings. Those are the state of the art, solid, earthquake proof, concrete, and steel buildings. There's no way an airplane hitting the top of them is going to make them do anything. It's, it's, I mean, they catch a fire up there, but that's about it. I, you know, that's, the rest of that stuff is all fake. Anyway, uh, I think that's most of this. Uh, let's see, one more comment from Brother, Oregon, Brother Jim in Oregon. It says, this all comes down to Christians banding together and helping each other through prayer and getting involved. Yeah, amen, amen. Banding together and uh, taking a faithful stand. What did you have to say, Sister Portman? What did you say? 
I, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, you know, people just have to band together and help each other out and um, just be very, um, you know, conscious. And you said, you know, just spread the word of God and believe in God and and um, just just know what's going on. Just be, you know, spiritually aware of what's going on. And I think uh, it'll help out tremendously. And I keep, amen, I keep having to mute my microphone, so it takes me a while to respond. <laughs> Sorry about that. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it's great great to have you on as a guest. I'm going to, the, the questions that came in on email, I'm going to wait for next week because we went over a bit on time. Uh, and uh, thank you all for your questions and your comments. And if you send in a question on email, you'll get that answered next week. And so I do apologize. There were some great, great comments that came in there. Also, um, and there's been a lot of bombs going off, nukes and different things in different parts of the United States, including Alaska. And uh, there's an interesting, uh, we'll probably do a show on that We're coming up. Uh, I'm going to see a brother farmer. He's kind of an expert on uh, things that are going on behind the scenes. And he's got, uh, if he wants to do a show, we'll have him on coming up. Uh, but I think Brother uh, brother Lidke is on for next week. Uh, he's our guest. And so I want to say, uh, before I say goodnight to everybody, I want to I want to give uh, uh, Brother Martin and Brother and brother Martin and Sister uh, Horniman my last chance. If you guys want to make any final comments, go right ahead. Well, actually, actually, <laughs> actually, I don't have a final comment. I'm, I'm pretty good tonight. It's an interesting show. Well, I just want to say one thing quickly. Um, for uh, Barack Obama has not been elected president yet. The Electoral College hasn't met yet. So it has not been certified yet because the Electoral College, you know, has not voted on the next president of the United States. So not that that's important, but I thought I'd just kind of stick that in <laughs> because I'm a political okay. junkie. But, um, but I think that... I, I think that things are, you know, things will things will look up, and I think ordinary citizens such as us are making a big difference. So, you know, absolutely, I, three hundred people is not that many, and and three hundred people literally could set this country back right, United States and the whole planet back right. It's uh, it wouldn't take that many people. So, well, yeah, you can uh, count one of those three hundred. That's for sure. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, we've got several thousand listeners, so the listeners just need to get where you can have miracles on demand because it's the power of God that's the solution. Mankind is not the solution. It's God that's the solution. In other words, people will always be corrupt. Will always make, People will always make mistakes. I'm going to include myself. We'll always make mistakes. Uh, well, not always, but until, until the new kingdom of God is fully manifested on this earth and we're changed and we're made incorruptible. Until that time comes, we're going to make mistakes. And so we really need God in the equation to keep things right. And I think that's the reason the United States was set up right and was pretty good country for the first hundred years is because uh, they to put God first and they made an honest effort to be one nation under God. They even held uh, meetings, church meetings in, in the White House and all kinds of places. Uh, Congress, the, the building that's used for Congress and so on. So, yeah, it was founded on really good principles, and we need to get those back, and and this time with the power of God in full manifestation. And it is coming. We've had brothers make prophecies. That was one of the emails. There's a sister that had a prophecy that the power of God is about to be manifested like you've never seen it before on this earth, and I believe that. I fully believe that. Uh, so we're in the end times. God is going to be more active than ever, than ever. And, of course, we know the devil is more active than ever. Uh, in his bunch, because that's what that's what uh, you know that's what's causing all this corruption, basically. But there are solutions, and God has solutions. And in closing, I do want to say uh, we are a listener-supported ministry, so everybody uh, do enjoy the the great teachings we have and be blessed. And also pray about it and see if God's moving you to donate to this cause. And we do appreciate all your donations. Anybody that donates is welcome to. Go to the gifts page, and there's some special gifts. We got. I often tell people we got about a million pages, totally free, teaching, advanced technologies, and all kinds of good things. But there's one page. If you've donated, you go to that page called the gifts page or the perks page, uh, and you can request any gifts off of there you'd like, uh, as long as you've donated to cover the minimum. And so we do appreciate you, and uh, that's that's about it for me for closing. Unless either you, brother or sister, have anything else you'd like to add. 
I think we're good. I'm, I enjoyed sure. being on the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> hey, thank you for being on. You've been a blessing to the team. We appreciate you, and uh, yeah, keep up the good work, and we'll have, we'll have you on again sometime. Okay. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. God bless you, and I'll say good night to everybody. Until next time, may God's richest and best be yours. Good night. Okay. Good night. Good night.